Our third lesson is from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. He then leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent, another, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read the scriptures? The stone that the builder rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken into pieces, and it will crush anyone whom it falls, on whom it falls. When the chief priest and Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him but feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There, let's try this again. All right. <laughs> I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So we have been working our way through the Gospel of Matthew. And it's important to note that we have had a change in setting. Jesus was on tour. He was healing and teaching, and feeding, and now Jesus is in Jerusalem. He is at the temple, and it's important to know that the temple is the center of the universe as far as temple Judaism goes. So Jesus enters the temple, and he's teaching when the chief priest and the elders come to him. And they begin asking him a series of questions concerning his authority. And Jesus answers them in parables. This week, we have the parable of the wicked tenants. Now, bear with me while I kind of identify some of the players in this parable. We have the landowner which is supposed to be God. We have the tenants, which are the religious authorities. We have the prophets, who are the slaves, and Israel, which is the vineyard. So, God the landowner sends his slaves, the prophets, to collect payment from the tenants, or the religious authorities but the tenants beat and kill the slaves. So the landowner sends more slaves, and the same is repeated. Then we have some wonderful foreshadowing when the landowner, or God, sends 
his son. Spoiler alert, they kill him. Jesus then points to the fact that the stone that is rejected will become the cornerstone and that the kingdom of God can be given to others so that it will bear fruit. That is supposed to be a hint to the Gentiles. Now, passages like this need to be read with very careful understanding. Because if we're reckless with our reading of Scripture, especially passages like this, we can be left with a heavy anti-Semitic tone. And so we always have to be careful about how we hear the lines comparing the Jewish religious authorities to wicked tenants, or lines about the kingdom of heaven being taken away and given to another people. And while it's certainly true that Jesus feuded with the religious authorities, they also let Jesus teach in the temple. They ate with him. They listened to him. And it's important to remember how many passages start with Jesus eating or talking with the Pharisees or the chief priests or the elders. We should never lose sight of the fact that Jesus was Jewish and that his critiques of the Jewish religion and of the Jewish leaders need to be seen as more of an internal debate, more of a familial discussion. That way we avoid sort of the sin of anti-Semitism. Now, the heart of our reading from Matthew is the theme of care for the people and things that we are entrusted with. Now, this is the first Sunday of stewardship season, so it's worth thinking about our resources and what we do with them. God gives us all that we have so that we might be wise stewards of God's gifts and use what we have to build up the kingdom of God. You might even think of us as the tenants and perhaps our household budgets, the vineyard. What fruits might be harvested from our vineyards for the kingdom of God? But I also can't help but think about this passage in the light of what today symbolizes for the people of all saints. Today, we are going to reopen. <sighs> Deep breath. <laughs> I deeply believe that Sally, the vestry, and I have been wise stewards of the resources that God has entrusted to us. We have tried to care both for the building and for the people of all saints. It's been hard, and hard decisions have had to be made. And to get and today we begin to live into one of those hard decisions. The decision to reopen our church was not an easy one. The vestry and your clergy have prayed about this every day. We have sat in Zoom meetings as we decided not to gather in person for my first Sunday here. We canceled plans for a welcoming picnic. We have painfully walked back two previous votes to reopen. And I have sat in the sanctuary and cried, wondering if we would ever, ever gather within the walls of this church building during my time here. After much prayer and many meetings, the decision was reached to reopen. Our beloved fourth in court is our spiritual home, but is also the spiritual home for several other groups. 
And they are in need of our building just as much as we are. The spiritual health of our community and the community around us has been weighing heavily on our decision. The people in our community need us to use what God has given us in this 200 year old building. We must be wise tenants of this vineyard. Our community needs our outreach ministries. There is so much need right now. The amount of healing that needs to take place, mental health, substance abuse, and spiritual healing. And I know that God will work through our building. God, God does work through our building. Now, it has been a really strange way to start a parish. I don't think I know anyone other than some of my colleagues right now that have ever started in a parish this way. I feel like the main way I have learned about most of you is through this building. Now, I'm a physical sort of person. Um, in seminary, the words, the word that they used was embodied. And so I kind of had to laugh, you know, leave it to graduate school to have to come up with a theological term for being in your body well. But anyway, I'm embodied. I, I feel spaces. And I can feel the energy here. There is a sort of residual energy that comes with prayer. And over time, prayer can season a place or a space like a good cast iron skillet. And every church I have ever walked into has always had its own unique energy. And while we have a mission statement and our own set of priorities, this building, it wants to heal. Whether it's in the sanctuary, our parish hall, our NA room, or out in the courtyard, our building wants to heal, heal people. And I imagine you can feel it the way I can. You can feel it deep in your bones when you're here and it's quiet enough. And this building has been aching to heal all the pain that's being spread around our community. It wants worship back. It wants music back. It wants its meetings back. Today, we take the first steps towards allowing this space to do what God has ordained it to do. To heal us and for those suffering around us. Today, we start the work of healing our community. Amen. Announcements. <laughs> um, it is stewardship season. So uh, be watching for uh, some blurbs in the newsletter about um, what stewardship means to various members of the congregation. And uh, if you would like to write a little blurb for the newsletter, please reach out to me as soon as possible. Today is the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, uh, my one of my top two favorite saints. 
and I am absolutely thrilled beyond measure to be offering a blessing of the animals at four o'clock. Uh, you, we are all animals, so I'll bless you too. But also bring your pets, your loved ones, whatever, whatever you've got. I have a feeling my kids are probably going to bring a stuffed animal or something. So, you know, feel free to be creative. If you don't have a pet, please come. Let me shower you with holy water. Let me say a little prayer. It won't take long, but it will be fun. Uh, 